Welcome, welcome, patrons. We start off with the request I got from Reddit user Alberona, who says, I'd love to see one on the circle. Vivian and Wynn are my favorite characters, but I'm totally not biased at all. And you know what? I've always had a soft spot for the circle, as my first ever Dragon Age anything was playing through as a circle mage warden. The circle is tied heavily with the Chantry, and as such, the Deventer circles are their own beasts entirely. So a lot of this video does not apply to Deventer mages. Likewise, places who do not have a strong Chantry presence will also have different roles and rules for mages, like the Kuhn or Dela shelves. But all that being said, let's get into the Circle of Magi. Founding. The Circle of Magi actually existed before the Chantry did, although not much has been said about this early circle and it might not even have used the name Circle of Magi. Either way, groups of mages in every major city existed. In 120 Divine, this group of mages helped Cordelius Draken, Emperor of Orlay and the creator of the Chantry, to defeat the Second Blight. In a peace offering to those mages, Emperor Draken, the First Inquisition, and the mages signed the Novaran Accord, allowing mages to openly practice and teach accepted magic within the newly formed Circle of Magi. The First Inquisition would become the Templar Order designed to both protect and watch the mages, but that's a story for another video. The early circle had some growing pains. Mages of the circle were only allowed to practice magic that helped the Chantry, like keeping the eternal flame lit or dusting high places. The mages of the time protested this boring life, and thanks to the help of their Templars, the Divine allowed them to live in a fortress outside of city limits, letting them practice whatever non-blood related magic they please. And this is what brings us to the circle we know of now. While at the time this was considered a wonderful advancement, we now know that there are some people who don't exactly consider this agreement ideal. Circle politics. Although all circles answer to the divine, it does have its own political structure. When you first enter the circle of magi, you are given a rank. So starting off from the lowest members, Apprentices, the rank of all new circle members who have yet to take their harrowing. This harrowing is completely secret to all apprentices, but the gist of it is that the apprentice uses Lyrian to project their mind into the Fade and must resist possession by a demonic force. Those apprentices who do not pass become possessed and are killed by Templars overwatching the harrowing. But not all mages are given this chance. Mages deemed too dangerous or incompetent become tranquil, their connection to the Fade severed, stripping them of their magical power and all emotions. Mages. Circle members who have passed their harrowing and are deemed safe to practice magic by the Chantry. These make up the largest part of the population of the circle. Enchanters. Mages who act as teachers to the young apprentices and often specialize in one field of magic. Senior Enchanter. Each circle of magi has a small council of these senior enchanters and they help the first enchanter govern the circle. First Enchanter. The leader of a circle and representative of all mages of that particular circle when all first enchanters meet with the Grand Enchanter. Grand Enchanter. The leader of all circles and representative of the mages to the divine. The Grand Enchanter is elected by all first enchanters in Thetis. Fraternity of Enchanters. Just because a circle has a series of councils to help promote mage rights and related policies doesn't mean they all have the same views. Once a person becomes a mage, they often join different fraternities, clubs of people who have taken a stance on the places of mages in Thetis. Currently, there are six major fraternities. Equitarians. Said to be the most popular fraternity, they stand by a moderate viewpoint that mages must use their power ethically, even without chantry law, and promote doing good for others and following a code of ethics. Libertarians. Mages who push for more rights, standing by the belief to split from the chantry entirely. Resolutionists. A group that emerged from the Libertarians, they support mage freedom no matter the cost. This group has the same belief as their parent fraternity, but are willing to go through extreme measures to win. They openly accept apostates and are said to have connections with the mage underground. Isolationists. Mages who believe that their magic is dangerous and say that mages must withdraw from non-mages completely. Loyalists. These mages believe that loyalty and obedience to the Chantry is the best course of action. Lucrucians. Unlike the other fraternities that center around a mage's relationship to the rest of Thetis, these mages believe in business, putting wealth before politics. The circle must do what is profitable first. This is also said to be the least popular fraternity. Life in the Circle. It seems that there are many circles scattered around Thetis, located in most major cities. There are references to circles in Starkhaven, Hosburgh, Janin, Ansberg, Oswick, Montesamard, Valrayo, and more. As players, we have been to the circle at Lake Callanhad and Kirkwall. Each circle has its own community to it. While Kirkwall seemed to mirror that of the city itself, by that I mean that it's a shithole, Lake Callanhads didn't seem so bad. Mages had a decent relationship with the Templars, and the first enchanter was a reasonable man. As such, it's hard to talk about daily life inside the circle. Some mages never see the light 
it a day, while others have courtyards they can go to freely. But from what we can gather from the information we do have, a few things do seem to be consistent. When someone is first brought into the circle of magi, their blood is drawn to create a phylactery. This will be stored in a secure chamber and used if the mage has escaped the circle, the blood inside glowing brighter when it's near the mage it was taken from. From that, they become apprentices, either becoming tranquil or taking the harrowing. It's here the mage decides what they want to do for the rest of their life. Some mages become enchanters that teach apprentices the ways of magic and to prepare them for their harrowing, while others become Fomari, mages who uses a skill to create objects to sell to the outside world, some even keeping storefronts in major city, while other mages even get into politics in the outside world, as is the case with Vivian. So what about love? Many circles that we have seen don't openly accept relationships within the circle, and the degree to which it's punished or accepted depends on that particular circle. Children born within the circle are generally considered a part of the chantry, and are given to orphanages and raised by the clergy from that church, although there have been some circles that haven't done this. And that, dear patrons, is all that we know about life inside the circle of Magi. Do you still have lingering questions, proof that I'm wrong, comments about your own fan theory? Feel free to tweet me at at on Twitter, or send a PM to user Gil and on Reddit. Rest your all.